Hello, this is CyberDoc. Visit us at cyberdocllc.com. Today, I'm going to do a repair on iPhone 4S battery connector. So first you put a layer of no clean flux onto the solder pads. To do this repair, you need to have intact solder pads. You can't have a missing or broken solder pads. And then I put on the 138 degrees Celsius solder paste from cyberdocilc.com. I prefer to use a solid paste for this repair because of its low melting temperature. It melts at 138 degrees Celsius. Instead of uh, the other solid paste, the lead is solid paste. Oh, by the way, this solid paste is lead free. It does not contain lead. The, instead of the traditional solid paste, which is uh, 183 degrees Celsius and that 50 or 45 degrees Celsius makes a huge difference in the repair, in my opinion. And now you're just mixing the, um, the solder paste and you heat it up, it will become all the little sphere, uh, spherical 20 micron, 30 micron sphere solder balls will clump together when you heat it up. And you are basically tinning the pad. So what you want to do is you tin the pad of solder that you put on. Flux is it, it can't really do this without flux. It's very essential for any repair, especially this project. Mm, you can do, you can use any flux, but if you want to get the same flux or flux similar quality flux, you can get it from cyberdogllc.com from my website. Uh, the link is down in the description of this video. But I, I think any flux will do just fine. As long as, you know, not bad flux, get good quality flux. So once, once you tin the pad, you clean out the flux. Even though this is no clean flux, it just, it gets sticky once it dries. Also another reason you want to clean because you don't use all the lead paste, the lead, little micron bowls from tinning the pad. And if you leave it on the mother logic board, it would just short something. So you want to clean those and yeah, wash it off, wash the broth out before. Uh, the trick is you, you brush it, you clean it, your brush, you don't want to keep those on your brush either. So you, you want to dilute it in more isopropyl alcohol. You just, you know, drown it in, in isopropyl alcohol. Eventually, the solution to pollution is dilution. Yeah, don't, don't, don't do that in chemistry lab, but um, and this is fine. It's left free solder, remember it's left free. Uh -huh. um, so you dilute it with a lot of isopropyl alcohol and all these little left free, left free bowls will get washed away and it will not be on it will not remain on the logic board anymore when you do that. You washing away the little those solid bowls. You really just don't want those those solid bowls on the logic board so be careful of the, the components. You wanna keep those away from the from the solid bowls. Okay, so now you're ready. Uh, next step will be putting the flux onto the connections that you want to solder. Put lots of flux on it. And put the battery connector on top. Then you can heat it up with a hot air gun. Since these solder melts at 138 degrees Celsius, 
you can set your hot air gun to 200 or 250 degrees Celsius. I prefer to go up to 300 degrees Celsius in this repair, or at least 300, because the 200 degree and 250 degrees Celsius temperature I'm talking about right now, it's really the onboard temperature. So you can set your hot air gun a little bit higher than that. And still get uh, you know less than two hundred degrees Celsius on the logic board, so it's really the onboard temperature, not how much the temperature set out your higher gun. I set my to three hundred. Okay, so now you put some flux on. You need flux for reworks. I can't stress that enough, and you need good quality flux. Using a bad flux will just slow you down and probably break something because the um, flux doesn't make it very good. If you have bad flux, it doesn't make it very, it's not very wettable for the metal to join together and prevent the oxidation and, and all that stuff. So now I'm moving my larger board to the edge of my table because I'm going to place my hot air gun right underneath it. This is the hot air band method. You drawn this, you basically drawn this area under hot air. And you want the hot air to reach above 138 or 140 degrees Celsius on the larger board to melt the solder and then you're done I guess you just need to melt the solder there's no clean flux which you can get um, from cyber.lc.com it's good because its vaporization temperature is around 240-270 degrees celsius so you don't need to worry about burning the logic board because before that happens the flux will evaporate and when it does evaporate it makes smokes and only when the flux is completely burned off on your board which not likely because i put so much flux on it then you start getting you know over 300 degrees celsius on the logic board and you might damage something even then you just might damage something so as long as you have enough flux on it, you don't need to, and you you see it is not being burned off. You don't need to worry about the temperature too much because it's not not quite anywhere close to three hundred degrees Celsius. So yeah, it has a little trick if you know your flux chemistry on the particular flux you're using. It helps for you to gauge like what's the temperature on the logic board right now. So if you're unfamiliar with your flux, you, or you got a really bad flux that burns out really quickly, then that won't work for you. So I like to wiggle my components. Uh, I get comments about me feathering on too much, but you you need to do this because you can't just melt the alloy and the solder paste you have to wiggle a little bit just to get the pins melted with the connectors um, solder joints so yeah and also i'm doing this as a tutorial video and i want you guys to see be able to see um, this okay so you see the flux is being evaporating it's making little bubbles that's good that means this temperature is around 200 something degrees celsius which is so much higher than what i want or perfect actually for soldering this and you still have flux on the board i mean the board was never over that temperature it would, it's always under like 200 something degrees celsius So that's it. That's pretty much that's done. That was pretty easy. Uh, the important thing about this method is that doing this will make sure that the two retaining connection, the the, um, the two solder connection in the back, 
which is very important. Without those two being soldered onto the board, uh, this connector will get ripped right off on the board because it's not evenly soldered on. So if you only had a soldering iron, you didn't have a higher gun, and you didn't have this uh, 138 degrees Celsius solder paste from cyberdogllc.com, you're gonna have a hard time to keep this connector on the board from basic everyday use. Um, well, not everyday use, but from putting a connector on and taking it off, you'll break it. Another way to do this without the, this method, it's use super glue to glue the connector. Once you're done, you glue the connector onto the logic board. The downside of that is, what if the connector will break again? And it will be very difficult for you to break the super glue off without damaging the tracks that's on the logic board. So, it's all cool. I mean, the solid paste is not that expensive. And flux, you can you can use any flux, but or you can use all flux. Um, but if you do use super glue, just be careful with super glue, don't use too much, otherwise you're gonna get like, it, it's gonna frost and it's gonna be a mess. So just use a little bit of gel super glue if you have to. Anyways, thank you for watching, I will see you next time.